I'm Dr. Corey Campbell with the Motion Palpation Institute. We're going to discuss and demonstrate uh, palpations and manipulations for the shoulder girdle for the throwing athlete. Now these are the same palpations adjustments you would do for, for anyone that comes in that complains of any sort of shoulder related and or upper extremity related problem. But we're going to go through the palpations real quick and then we'll talk about what we would do with those findings. So again, everything's based on motion. We try to palpate these joints in three axes of rotation. We're going to do the elbow, the shoulder, the sternoclavicular joint, and the cervical thoracic junction. The AC joint would also be considered part of that in, in a throwing athlete, but there's really not a lot to palpate and there's not a lot to do with the AC joint. It's mostly around the shoulder and the cervical thoracic junction. That's where you want to start with most of your overhead athletes. But we'll start with the elbow. Um, to palpate the elbow is pretty simple. We really only have supination and pronation. So a lot of times I just put my thumb over the radial head. So we're at the proximal aspect of it and we just used distal rotation. So we we're going to supinate and just shear the joint for joint play with my thumb on the radial head or we can even use both hands here. We can supinate and joint play or try to shear ulna off radius. Um, there's not a lot of restriction in the elbow typically, like a lot of it comes from the proximal part of this, but those are our main palpations. We could even just supinate, pronate, and feel if there's motion in the radial head. Most of your elbow restrictions are gonna be on the radial side because the ulna, as you know, is kind of a closed packed joint because of how its structure is. So. Most of this is going to be aimed at the, at the radial head. Um, adjustment wise, we don't do a lot of osseous adjusting in the elbow just because of the structure. So that's the palpation, supination uh, of the forearm, radial, head, joint place shear, or we can even just grab the ulna, ulna radius and try to shear. We want to try to do this mostly in supination because we spend a lot of time in pronation. Your overhead athlete also spends a lot of time in pronation. So if they're gonna lack motion, it's gonna be in the opposite direction. Next, we'll check the glenohumeral joint. So I'll have uh, Dr. Peters laying his back here. With your head up there, yeah. <clears throat> so for mobilizations or palpations of the glenohumeral joint, most of it's aimed at the posterior capsule. So I use my hand to create some distraction because it makes it easier to palpate the, the glenohumeral joint, so I'm going to be in his armpit and as close to the glenohumeral joint as possible. So I'm here, I use the rest of the arm as a lever, so I pin this against his rib cage, and then we shear into the posterior capsule and just joint play this. We can scoop into the posterior capsule, so we get close. I take my hand on the posterior aspect of the scapula glenohumeral joint, I hold that distraction, so I'm pulling the glenohumeral head out, and then I just scoop with some distraction into the posterior capsule. We can also strangle the head of the humerus here, kind of let that distraction go and see if we can just joint play this in different directions and see if there's points that are more restricted. Like I said, again, the posterior capsule is typically where we get most of our restrictions. Um, next is the sternoclavicular joint. So we can stay right here I can put my hand over the SC joint right at the sternal connection here, and I can run through a range of motions. So we can go here and just run through these range of motions here. We can adduct, we can adduct, we can externally rotate, we can internally rotate. Most of our restrictions occur with abduction here in this, in this plane. We could do this seated as well. So I'll have Dr. Peters sit up. And I'll move kind of behind here. Could do this bow and arrow palpation where he just lets his arm relax on mine. I palpate the SC joint here, or if you're Mark King, you can use your 18 feet fingers and put them here and just extend, AB duct, we can internally rotate, we can externally rotate. So we could joint play it from here. You really don't want to just grab on the clavicle and try to shear it. It's pretty painful. Um, you're better just better off just using these planes of motion. Next is the cervical thoracic junction. We can do this in a sideline position. So I have Dr. Peters face me on his side. This is motion assessment. So this is right out of the Carol Levitt's book, The Czech Republic and the Prague School where we can just motion assess the cervical thoracic junction. 
we would just put our thumb or hands or fingers over the spinous processes and then we run through our six uh, ranges of motion here. We can extend. When you do this, you want a little bit of cervical retraction to begin with. So we extend and then or retract, then extend. And you should feel the, the motor segments move underneath your thumb and hypothenar pad. And this, if this is ever a time when we notice how we work functionally in motor segments, this is really gonna make this obvious because you can feel a chunk of spine here, probably three segments at, at least, if not more, that don't move correctly. And so we retract, extend, and just feel for motion there. We laterally bend, the spinous processes would drop down. We could joint play this after that if we wanted to, and then we could rotate and also joint play as the spinous processes drop down. Or we can just feel the motion or the lack thereof with these motions. And then lastly, we can flex and just feel the spinous processes open up. We cannot joint play that because I don't want to go through his chest. The other palpation would be in the chair, so we'll go to the chair here. <clears throat> and this is joint play, so we would just have them extend and I joint play. I'm covering the spinous processes with my thumb, so probably two, sometimes three at a time. And I just joint play at the end range of extension which is where all of our joint plays need to happen. They need to happen as close to end range as possible so we can feel the push or the sponginess or the springiness of the joint. Lateral flexion, spinous processes go away. I challenge across and joint play. Do this all the way down to T4 because that's the functional level of the cervical spine. Left lateral flexion, spinous processes go right, challenge across that way. Rotation is the same thing. We can get on the contralateral side or the ipsilateral side of rotation and challenge across. Or we can get on the contralateral side and try to challenge through the chest. That one's harder and it takes a lot more time to get good at. Um, I think most people can feel to the ipsy side as they challenge across, uh, across the, the ipsilateral side of rotation. And we can actively palpate. We put our thumbs on the spinous processes. Uh, Jace is gonna look up. He's gonna look down. He's gonna turn to the right. He's gonna turn to the left. He's gonna go right ear, right shoulder, left ear, left shoulder. And then we just feel the motion through those active ranges. So those are three different palpations that you can do for the cervical thoracic junction. They're all gonna tell you the same thing, which is gonna increase your confidence as an adjuster. Those are the palpations for the upper extremity shoulder girdle of the throwing athlete.